she, her physical problems, her colitis and her insomnia got worse the last six months and she wakes up at two and four o'clock with thoughts about this, probably about this difficult emotional state. So this is her main present current disease, her main problem. Now, we go on to see the miasmatic profile of the patient. In order to do so, you, have all, uh, you must have already read the description of the main characteristics, physical and psychological, of the three minds the psoric, the psychotic, and the syphilitic. So, we will start seeing if this person is psoric, we have to decide if we have a clear, a clear predominance, a clear dominance of one mild. Is our patient mainly psoric, psychotic, or syphilitic? Even from the uh, reading this, the, the reading of the notes, I have already decided from my clinical experience which is the predominant mind. <coughs> my decision is that it's a clearly psoric person. <coughs> Let's start in a different way. Is she psychotic? We don't have a psychotic structure. It's a thin, shriveled, psoric, yin type of, type of body. She is trapped with herself, she can't get out, not because she is suppressed by others, but she fights with her mind because she has many must, ought to, should to, and so on. She fights with her superego. She is a person that has many worries about her children, about the financial state. She is not psychotic because she doesn't express herself. She doesn't express introvert, doesn't express her deep felt matters. She doesn't express her anger, although she is angry. She expresses her anger, her anger in a psoric way. She keeps insults inside and she gets bitter. So, if we want to uh, see things uh, clearly, she is not a, a psychotic person. The question is, is she a psoric or a, a person a clearly psoric person, or is she a syphilitic person that pretends to be psoric in order to gain things and to do things, in order to manipulate people? Let's see about it. Let's see what are the miasmatic characteristics of here and take the general a picture says that she is psoric, but we have to take each part and see if it confirms this diagnosis, this miasmatic diagnosis. Her body type is psoric. She is thin, shriveled, wrinkled, prematurely old. She is a medical doctor, 
that starts again at the age of 57, 58, two years ago, to deal once again with what she all the time liked but didn't have the courage to, to choose to become a homeopathic doctor. And now at this age, she wants to become again a homeopath, to become a homeopathic doctor, not for the money, not for the fame, because she enjoys it. She likes uh, to know things and she wants to discover herself. She wants to solve her emotional problems. She wants through homeopathy to try to understand herself and relieve herself from her own troubles. To help others also, she enjoys helping others, but also to solve her problems. She cares about her children much, but from the whole picture, this is not the syphilitic dominance and overprotectiveness, although she says she is overprotective, we will talk about it. My opinion is that she is not syphilitically overprotective for the sake of dominance. She truly cares about her children. And <clears throat> since I know her, I can uh, have this uh, conclusion just by knowing her and how she reacts and how she behaves. But if I didn't know the patient and it was described to me by the doctor, I could have the same conclusion by examining the rubrics. So, so she's psoric, her insomnia is of a psoric insomnia because she has these thoughts about these things. We could have also a syphilitic person that cannot sleep because is, 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 it is troubled with things, but the syphilitic person has these thoughts about how to dominate and manipulate others, about how to uh, achieve his egoistic goals. Then we have a syphilitic insomnia. But in this case, we have a psoric insomnia because the whole person is psoric and because she is in a trap that she can't get out because she fights with her ideals. She tries to be a very uh, a person that is very good, morally good. So I think that most of the time her thoughts have to do with uh, if she has done something uh, good or bad. It's a moral insomnia. This is a scenario for the present. I haven't yet decided clearly if I will prescribe a psoric remedy, but I start examining the case and the most possible scenario is that she is a psoric person. I haven't decided yet. I try to see if all things are uh, fixed, uh, uh, comply with the psoric scenario. Let's go on and see other uh, miasmatic characteristics. <coughs> we have a hot person, mildly hot. This could mean that she is a psychotic person, but I don't have many other psychotic rubrics. So I just leave it for the present. I don't have her sweat becomes worse from stress. So I have a person that is a psychosomatic personality, a person that is easily uh, uh, influenced by stress. So that's why she's got insomnia from stress and colitis from stress that is worse the last six months. And her sweat is worse stress.
Where's milk? We will see it later. later. Irritability. She says that she is irritable. She evaluates herself as being very irritable, but she doesn't express her anger much. What kind of persons usually <coughs> don't express their anger? The psychotic ones. The, syphilit the, the, the psychotic person easily gets angry and easily expresses his anger. He has no trouble to express his anger even to his boss or to anyone. The syphilitic person usually expresses in many ways her anger, his anger, but there are some times that she may not express her anger in order to later on manipulate others. She may pretend to be the victim, the syphilitic person, the victim of her children, the victim of her uh, husband, the victim of society. And so she says, I'm very calm, I don't, I never get angry, I never express my anger, I try to show love to all, to be very good citizen, very good person, but this is a hypocrite a hypocritical uh, situation, a hypocritical mask. We don't have such information of being a hypocritical person. And I confirm that because I know her as a person. So this is a, probably a psoric uh, characteristic that she gets, very angry inside, so she is a sensitive person. She easily gets insulted, easily gets worried, easily gets stressed, but she doesn't express her anger. Even when she expresses her anger, she expresses it, what does, did she say first? She didn't say that she, shout, she shouts, she said that she expressed it with any arguments. It's very important to take in consideration <coughs> what does the patient say first. She doesn't talk first about shouting. She talks first about arguments and advices. These are psoric kind of expressions, probably. She does it in a strict way and she says intense, but I don't believe her because she shouts only one. I believe that, uh, and she says at times with humor if it's not worth it. My interpretation is that since she, she is psoric, in order to avoid contradiction, and because she is a coward, she is a submissive person, she gets over contradictions with humor, if it's not something severe, something very important. <clears throat> so, we have a person that is probably psoric, she gets angry and offended and insulted and stressed easily, but she keeps it inside. She only expresses her anger slightly and in, a, in psoric ways mostly. She does the same thing when insulted. In a, she reacts in a psoric way again. She can't stand ins insults, that is, she is very stressed in the same way that she is very irritable. She is very stressed, very, feels very much injustice. She says that, I feel injustice. When somebody insults her, 
She doesn't so much feel angry and want to revenge and want to do something to react. She is a submissive person, a psoric person. <clears throat> she feels injustice. She doesn't feel uh, her ego hurt, her personality hurt, her image hurt. She feels injustice because she is a submissive person. And what does she do? She weeps alone. Three. She tries to, con to, to constrict herself, to uh, pull herself together, and then she, go, she finds an excuse to go and weep alone. Because she doesn't want to show weakness. She doesn't want to be pitied. This could be a person that is very psoric, but it could also be a person that is syphilitic but is very insecure about her image and so she doesn't want to show weakness. We will decide later if this is <coughs> a, a, a psoric rubric or a syphilitic rubric. Feeling justice, weeps alone, psoric condition, can't stand insults, weeps. <coughs> will not revenge. She says that, but we don't have to believe it. We have to decide if she is saying the truth or not. In this case, I believe she says the truth. And she is being objective with herself. Because I, of the whole picture and because I, I know her as a person. Instead of uh, revenging others, what does she say? She has bitter. She is left with bitterness in her heart. She feels wounded. My conclusion, my scenario is that she is wounded emotionally. It's not her egoism that is wounded, her syphilitic egoism. Because she says that um, <laughs> don't hit it. Um, injustice, consider in the same bitterness and wounded. She may erase the person, say. I will not deal with him. But it's not my, my conclusion, my, my scenario is that she doesn't erase in a syphilitic way. We will decide for it later. She may erase in the sense, the other person in the sense that she is introvert and wants, because she is bitter, she doesn't want to have anything to do with this person in order not to be hurt. Not because her syphilitic ego was hurt. <clears throat> Other psoric um, things. She received about, about indiscretion. This is, could be mainly a psoric rubric or a syphilitic rubric. She does it because if I am a Lachesis person, a syphilitic person, and I am very gossiping about others, I don't like when others are indiscreet because they will learn about me and then I believe that they will gossip about me. This is a syphilitic indiscretion. But the psoric indiscretion is that I am introvert, I don't uh, want others to, to talk about me because I am hurt and insulted and so I don't like indiscretion because I am introvert and psoric. She doesn't like rudeness. 
She doesn't like di di dictatorial uh, domineering behavior. Strong-headed people that she can discuss with. When they consider me as granted. She doesn't like injustice. So, a person that doesn't like indiscretion, rudeness, dictatorial behavior, strong-headed people, and injustice, is most likely to be a submissive person. And we have information for her for being submissive because she doesn't express her anger. She, uh, she gets easily insulted and wounded and doesn't react in a syphilitic way to revenge. So she is psoric. And all rubrics tend to support this uh, um, supposition, this scenario. It's very difficult to express in a different language, not your mother tongue, in, when dealing with such subtle uh, ideas and qualities. But we will manage. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we have a person that the, all the reasons that she's, uh, uh, she gets angry and keeps it inside are solid mostly. It reveals to us that we have to do with a submissive person. And it, was a, it is a submissive person because she didn't do professionally what she originally wanted to become a homeopathic doctor. Instead, she became an anesthesiologist, not because she liked it, but for reasons for, of survival. And she did that patiently for 30, 35 years. And now that she is freed from her <coughs> responsibilities towards her children, and now that she is alone without any husband, she wants to do what she didn't do all these years. Is then that a submissive person? If she was a person, a syphilitic dominant person, she wouldn't care and put first her children or survival. She would do her goals. And syphilitic people are strong people, dynamic people. They succeed most of the times. They do things the way they like it. While submissive, psoric people are subject to dictatorial behavior, to rudeness. They don't do things, they put first the interest of their beloved persons, of their children, of their husband or wife, of their patients, if they are doctors, uh, of others. Well, she is tidy, but on, not in, the ex, in an extreme grade. A person that is sorry is usually tidy because she wants to be responsible. That's why she said that I don't like unre unreliability because she tries to be, she tries hard a sorry person to be tidy and reliable, do the job. She is introvert too. My evaluation is that she is introvert three. Why I say so? I correct the doctor that took the case because she is introvert three. Why? Because I say so? No. Because she didn't, although she, she knew me, although I was her doctor, she was talking to the doctor, no one else was listening. Even now, uh, they don't know who, who she is. <laughs> so, <clears throat> although she was talking to me personally as a doctor, she didn't say my main problem is my emotional problem. 
And although I asked her in a discreet way, slightly pushing, she didn't reveal what has happened to her, what the personal problem was. And I didn't push deliberately on purpose. And although I didn't push, uh, uh, I pushed slightly, uh, she didn't say anything about it. If she was a syphilitic person pretending to be <coughs> introvert and suffering, she may pretend in the, at first that she didn't want to talk about it. She could even say, I don't want to talk about it and to bother you, doctor. But if I didn't push her and ask her <coughs> more, in the end, she would bring the matter back and she would talk about it and she would use the subject in order to project <coughs> the image of the person that is the victim. A psoric person is the victim, victim of the syphilitic persons most of the time. But a psoric person will not project and uh, strongly will not uh, talk with strong words about how victim she is. The syphilitic person will exaggerate and will exaggerate on persons, on, per on, on purpose. These are the two main characteristics of the syphilitic myers exaggeration and purposeful exaggeration, purposeful behavior, deliberate, deliberate behavior, many times manipulative behavior, projecting a certain impact in, on exaggerating. So if I had to do with a syphilitic person that pretended to be the victim, she would talk about it and with strong words and emphasize about it. And we would do it on purpose in order to project the image of the victim and to manipulate by that her children, her husband, her doctor, anybody. Introvert 3. For this reason, that she didn't talk and she avoided discreetly to talk about her main psychological problem. Even to me, being her doctor and uh, her friend, a friend of her. Uh, she is in Proverb 3 because she doesn't talk about her personal problem. And she's sorry because she doesn't express her anger. She doesn't react much when she's insulted. She keeps it inside. She shrinks. She shrivels. That's why her body is prematurely old and shriveled. And that's why she is stoop shouldered Because her body follows the type of behavior of her mind. What does her mind do when she's insulted? She does this. What does her body do accordingly? It does this. It's a solid body type like this. <clears throat> Aversion consolation. This is mostly a, a psoric behavior, but it could be also a syphilitic behavior for egoistic reasons, for selfish reasons. Aversion pity, 2-3, two, 2-3, three. Two, two, three. but um, now let's go on, compassionate. If it, if she's telling the truth, 
This is a psoric characteristic, being compassionate. If I had a syphilitic lachesis, for example, person that projected the image of the very good and moral person that is very compassionate and loves her children and all the world, then she would exaggerate. She would talk about it. She would say, my heart is bleeding when I hear about the refugees from Syria. My heart is bleeding when I see poor people. It's a different thing to project and exaggerate being compassionate from really being compassionate. A short person, uh, if asked, would not say on her own that she is compassionate. If she was asked, she would say yes, but would not exaggerate. A syphilitic person would exaggerate and say, I love all the world. I'm a very compassionate, a very sensitive person, doctor. This is a syphilitic expression. She is pretending to be. She is acting. She plays the role of the very good woman. So, what do we have here? Fear loneliness, although I enjoy being alone. How do I uh, uh, interpret this? If she is a psoric person, which is probably the case, she would fear loneliness. She would like to have company, not to be alone, but what kind of company? One or two very close friends. But yet, she enjoys being alone. Why? If she is a psoric person, she enjoys being alone because she had much trouble with many people around her, with her husband, with other people. So she finds calmness, being alone and not having to uh, contradictions with other persons. That is my interpretation, taking in consideration the whole personality that is submissive and psoric. We will talk about this later, being overprotective. Um, nervous frequent in urination shows that she is a very sensitive and nervous and psychosomatic person. She says that she is insecure. This is also a psoric quality, insecure. And this is also a psoric thing. She says that she likes books, especially literary literature books. She reads one or two books per month, and she says she reveals that it's a passion of hers, not because she wants to uh, project the image of the person that has read a lot and knows many things, but because it's the shelter of her mind. Sepsoric, romantic person that is so hurt and bitter and troubled from everyday life that she finds relief and shelter living by reading, not in the real cruel world, but in the romantic, psoric, literature world of novels. There she finds shelter. She lives in her own psoric world and it's a relief for her. So, no psychotic rubrics of worth, definitely not psychotic. We don't judge miasmatically a person by the physical characteristics or the diseases mostly, but mainly by the psychological characteristics. For example, as we have talked when we uh, described uh, the materia, the materia medica uh, Thuya, Thuya may have many psychotic diseases and symptoms, but Psychologically, she is very psoric, so 
predominantly she is a psoric person, not a psychotic person, although she has many psychotic diseases and predispositions. In this case, we have almost none, almost nothing psychotic. The second step is that we have many seemingly psoric qualities and some qualities that may be syphilitic. But if we build the scenario, the whole image, then we have to do it with a psoric person and I explained to you why. We don't have a person that is manipulative, we don't have exaggeration, we don't have purposeful behavior, we don't have any uh, dynamic personality doing her own things. We have a person that is psoric, shriveled. Her, the story of her life is that she is submissive. The story of her life has to do with serving others not to dealing with herself and she is trapped in her ideals fighting with herself with this certain affair that she has. So, first thing, we've read the case. Second thing, we talked about the background, the psoric background. Then we've talked about the miasmatic profile and we've decided more or less and we are sure but not until the last minute of analysis but we are quite certain for the present at the time being that we have to do with a very psoric person what kind the next step is to try to find the essence and see what kind of uh, constitutions, chronic constitutions, belong to such a psoric profile and a profile and uh, uh, such an essence. Let's, we have already talked about this person and we have already decided what is the essence. We have talked about it without knowing it. What is the essence of this person? The essence is that is a very psoric, submissive, easily hurt, introvert and sensitive person. This is the essence. The heart of the essence is the psoric miles. We have a psoric person that is very easily hurt, irritable, inside, hurt, insulted, but it keeps it inside. Very sensitive, very nervous inside, but very introvert, very submissive, very considerate, very reliable, very caring about others, but uh, very submissive. What chronic constitutional influences and pictures does this remind you of? The first one to think of is Natrum Muriaticum. Natrum Muriaticum. <coughs> it is a psoric constitutional picture. That's why I think of a psoric remedy, a psoric chronic remedy. Someone could say that since, since she is in a trouble, an emotional, a difficult emotional state, shouldn't we think of Ignacia? And he would be right. It's a possibility that we have to think of. Someone else could say, what other kind of psoric, 
persons, sorry, per, um, constitutional pictures should one think of. Other psoric constitutions are silica. Argentum nitricum. Because we have some things here, some rubrics here of the Argentum nitricum. Someone could say calcarea carbonica. Now, let's examine <coughs> these things, these uh, constitutional pictures. What is in favor, uh, because, uh, before we go to examine the first possibility, we try to get out to uh, get rid of the less possible constitutional pictures and then try to differentiate among the two or three possible ones, most possible ones. Calcara carbonica. It may be psoic, but Calcara carbonica is very cold. Here we have a hot person. It doesn't have much fears, characteristic fears of the Calcaria Carbonica um, constitution. Fear about loneliness is not a fear. If she said, I am afraid of death, I'm afraid of uh, thieves when I am alone. But we didn't have any such information and we are sure that the doctor has asked these kind of questions to determine if she is calcarea carbonica or not. So, apart from being sorry, we don't have any other clues for calcarea carbonica. We have fear of insanity because of too much ideas, and calcarea carbonica can be afraid of uh, insanity because she has many worries in, in her mind about the future mostly. But we don't have any other uh, things to uh, refer to Calcarea Carbonica. Exotic colitis can be found also at Calcarea Carbonica, but also at Natum Muriatic and many others. Argentum nitricum. We have some information that leads us to the conclusion that maybe she was under the influence of the Argentum Nitricum constitutional uh, picture uh, years ago, because we have some rubrics of Argentum Nitricum. For example, fixed ideas was two in the past, now one. For example, when I leave the house, uh, I start thinking that maybe I have forgotten the door open or the kitchen on. We have this fear of insanity that is common also in our general metricum because of too much ideas, but ideas that have to do with impulses, with fixed ideas, that something, uh, uh, um, what if, what if something bad happens? This thing, that thing, the other thing. We also have nervous frequent urination. While waiting for a, an important appointment, she has frequent urination, and this is also a great rubric characteristic of Argentum nitricum. 